Oh, are we on the air? Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today I'm going to talk about getting out of trouble. When you get yourself into a trap and you have a situation where somebody's played safe on you or maybe you played bad position, you need to get out of these situations. Two things that people do not practice nearly enough. One is playing safeties and two, getting out of safeties. So what I'm going to show you is a number of different ways to get out of different situations where you might not have a shot or it might appear that you don't have a shot. Now you're never going to have these exact situations but you will have similar situations and the whole idea of this video is to open up your mind, your creativity as far as ways to get out of this. Now some of the shots you're going to have more than one way to get out of. I'm going to show you one technique for each segment of the video. So you might have a jump shot situation but you decide to go and kick it off of uh, two rails. That's fine. If you have a way to get out, you have a way to get out. And not everything in this video is going to be things that you're capable of doing. But I want you to understand that there are things that you can look forward to and maybe work on to get part of your game. So let's get started. In each situation that we show you in this video, you're going to have two things on the table. The red or black balls, which are going to represent obstacles that you need to get around and the gold ball, which is going to represent the ball that you need to hit in order to get out of trouble. The gold ball could represent the one ball in a game of nine ball or the lowest ranked ball on the table that you need to hit. These might represent your opponent's balls or balls that uh, are not in your numerical sequence if you're playing a rotation game like nine ball or ten ball. So understand that in each situation, these balls represent your obstacles. The gold ball is going to represent the ball that you're trying to make contact with to get out of a situation. So let's look at a couple shots. So here we have a situation where our ball is sitting right in the pocket, but we're blocked in. This is the ideal jump shot situation because we're going to win the game probably just making contact with that ball. So let's give it a shot. We may come off the rail first simply to avoid scratching. So I'm going to aim actually for this diamond here so that I can come in from an angle and don't worry about this bouncing crazy ball that's going to have a little bit of backspin on it ending up in the pocket. So a shot looks like this. And we are out. So as you can see, when you're making these jump shots, you don't have a lot of control over the cue ball. If you have short situations where your object ball is here, you have an easy opportunity to hit that ball if you're good at jumping and freeze the cue ball in that relative area. But when you're coming off of multiple rails or you're using the rail like I did with that shot, keep in mind that this ball is going to go around the table and you need to adjust for that. If the table is too wide open and you might scratch, come up with other ideas. But any of shot where we're trying to get out of trouble is probably going to put us in jeopardy in some way while we're shooting the shot. That's the whole point. It is a trouble shot. So let's look at the next shot. Notice how on that shot, our cue ball froze right in space. This is because on this shot, when it's executed well, it has a little bit of backspin, and if you drop it in the right zone, you're going to freeze that cue ball up, and you don't have to worry about running around the table. So let's go to something else. Guys, what you just saw is a masse shot. When you have a situation where a jump might not be appropriate, or maybe you don't have a jump shot in your game, you're going to shoot a long masse, 
And if you practice these shots, you'll have an opportunity to make some shots that normally would have left you stuck. From where our cue ball was, we have a very difficult route if we try to go off of multiple rails to hit that ball. We could have jumped the ball in that case, but it also is a longer jump. Keep in mind that anytime you're jumping the cue ball, you put yourself in jeopardy of doing a couple of things. One, losing control of the cue ball. Two, the cue ball dropping off the table. So the mass A shot is something that I would more likely lean towards in any kind of match where I'm not allowed to use a jump cue or jumps aren't allowed or anything like that. So the side that we took on this shot is very important. When you have a chance to go on the side where the rail is going to assist you in hitting that ball, that's the direction you want to go. If we mass say to this side, we don't have the benefit of that rail because we're now playing off the short rail. So keep that in mind as you learn this shot that you want to go on the rail side whenever possible because you have the benefit of spinning into the ball as we did and making it. Also, the downside of mass A shots, there's an awful lot of spin on the cue ball. If you hit it straight in, the cue ball will very often just follow the object ball into the pocket. So anytime you can come off a rail, that's the way you want to go. But keep in mind your cue ball is going to be a little loose, it's going to be going around the table, and uh, you might get yourself in more trouble. So practice these shots, check out the video on how to shoot this shot, and it's a lot of fun, and it really does, as I like to say, break your opponent's spirit when they see you do it. They don't have that shot in their game, it kind of breaks them down, and you, you have an easier match going forward. Let's look at another shot. I know to a lot of you beginners, these shots look like trick shots. Some of you will even call them trick shots. But understand that every shot that I show you in this video is going to be something that is part of the foundation of every professional player and should be part of your game. Because you can make these shots in APA matches, you can make them playing with your friends. It all matters regardless of what level you're playing on. And these are shots that even though you might not have seen them because of the caliber of players that you're with on a daily basis, they are common shots in the world of pool. So I want you to understand these shots, check out the videos that are associated with these shots, and they will help you learn each and every shot that I'm showing you today. This is one that's going to involve the diamond system. If you don't know what the diamond system is, it is using these diamonds, these spots that you see on your rails. They are not there for aesthetics. If they were, they look a lot better. They're there to give you a guide for getting around the table off of multiple rails, sometimes off of one rail, sometimes off of multiple rails. But the diamond system is a mathematical system for using these diamonds in order to get from one place to the other. Now, I'm not going to teach you the diamond system today. You're going to have to check out the video. But I'm going to give you a basic diamond system shot that will help you going forward once you learn the system. Here's a situation where we are on the gold ball as usual. We need to get to this ball, but we have all these blockers in the way. We might even try to squeeze through here, but I can tell you from my angle, it doesn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to come off the short rail and the long rail to come down here to play this ball. Now, how are we going to know exactly where to hit it? Without getting into all the dynamics of the diamond system, I'm going to show you the math real quick. It might not mean anything to you when you first see it, but once you watch the diamond system video, you'll understand what I'm doing. This, our target ball, is one, two, three, four, five diamonds away from our object ball, from our cue ball. Using the diamond system, we count across this way for the short rail. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what we're looking at is a object ball that is five diamonds the long way from our cue ball. So we're going to take five diamonds on the short rail in order to hit it, which means this is diamond number one on the short rail, then two, three, four, five. If we shoot with running English off of diamond number five, we will move five diamonds down from where our cue ball lies. So the shot looks like this. 
Now it's important that you have the right speed, the right amount of English, the right touch when you're shooting these shots. If I put too much English or too little English on that ball, it is not going to carry and follow the math. But it is a great system once you have dialed in the proper amount of English for shooting these. So give this a shot. I'm going to show you another situation where we're just trying to hit our object ball, but now everything is in a slightly different situation as far as position goes. So we need to hit this ball, and let's say we have our blockers here. Now if we do the math using the same system I just showed you, we are one, two, three diamonds away as we shoot into this rail. Where's diamond three for us? One, two, three. If we come off of this spot here, we will land at this spot here. So this is the basis of the diamond system. Pretty cool, huh? Especially if we don't scratch. So keep in mind, anytime we're trying to get out of trouble, we do risk the cue ball getting away from us. So you need to weigh one shot versus the other and how important it is to make that shot. There's going to be a lot of cases where we just don't take a shot or we play another safety somehow. But keep that in mind that each and every shot that I show you is going to involve getting around the table in creative ways that might leave us in even worse trouble. But we already have a problem, so that's why we're shooting them. Okay, here we have another diamond system shot, but this time we're going to go off with three cushions to hit our gold ball maybe even make it in this corner pocket. That would be pretty good. Now, this shot is not going to take any math. I'll tell you why in a moment, but in the meantime, let's shoot the shot. There we hit our gold ball. We're out of trouble, at least for now. Now, why does that shot not take any math? There is a very common three rail shot that all of you should know. And if you don't know it, you haven't been watching a lot of my videos because I shoot it all the time. We're going to come off of this diamond. Remember, when we look at the diamonds and we're counting diamonds and we're shooting at diamonds, we're always shooting into the diamond. So that's our target on this diamond number two. It's not this spot in front of the diamond. It is as if we're shooting at it going through the cushion. This is a very common shot. It might be a little bit different with the English that you put on the ball or on your table or the weather. There's a lot of things that affect this shot, but you will come within centimeters of hitting the right spot over and over again when you learn to, as I said before, dial into this shot. Once you know this shot, where you're getting around the table off the three rails and you're heading towards this pocket, you can now do a lot of different things. So once you understand that coming off of this rail is going to take you over here towards this diamond, and coming off of that diamond will then lead you to that spot there, which will lead you to the pocket, you have an opportunity to hit balls coming off of the exact same spots over and over again at different locations around the table. So regardless of where our object ball is that we're trying to make contact with, it is the same shot. So once you know what's happening with those three rails, you have a chance to do a lot of different things. So you say to me, Brian, what if my object ball is on the rail, say a diamond away from the pocket, the cue ball is still coming from the same direction, what do I do to make that adjustment? Well, now you're getting into the math, but I'll give you a simple idea that will help you make the adjustment. Basically, as you come up this rail, you need to come down from this direction. So if this diamond is going to take you to the pocket, where do you think this diamond is going to take you? It's going to give you a more narrow view as it comes around and you have an opportunity to hit this ball. You might not make it over and over again. But remember, we just simply need to hit it. If we make it, that's a bonus. So let's shoot the shot.
and we're out of trouble. Let's shoot it one more time, and this time try to make the shot. The problem, by the way, with trying to make these shots is our margin for error is greatly reduced because instead of hitting the ball solid, we're now trying to get into a very small gap, which is going to reduce our chances of actually hitting the ball. If we're off a little bit on this diamond, we might end up here and not hit our ball at all. So keep in mind, sometimes your target is going to be the largest part of the ball. If you have to make it for some reason, you go after it. If not, just try to hit it. That's in the pocket. So there you go. Let's look at the next shot. Okay, gang, here's a shot that you're going to have to develop a knack for how to hit it. The knack is my least favorite word in pool. It basically means the math is not available to you. Every shot that I show you that's off of multiple rails, there's math you can do to dial into that shot. But with a shot like this, you have to develop a feel for it. I actually had this come up in a match and had to shoot it, made it on the first try, lucky for me, because if you don't have the right touch, the right speed for that table, you're just simply not gonna make the shot. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come off of this rail and then this rail to come down here to make our gold ball. Now we don't have any other options. We can't go this way to kick at it. We can't go off of that rail because we're locked up actually behind this ball just a little bit. We can't go up and back because these balls block us. There's just not a lot of options for us. So if we play just a bit inside here, we should have a decent chance of getting to this pocket. And that's where the knack comes in. You're not going to be able to sit down with a calculator and figure out, okay, I need to be a quarter of an inch inside here off of that edge and that'll bring me off of here into this pocket. You shoot enough of these, you'll figure it out. And luckily the shot doesn't come up too often. But if you get an exact layout like this, it's a billion to one shot. But you will have some situations where shots like this will bail you out. So let's take a shot at it. I'm going to aim just inside here, as close to the inside of this pocket as I can without actually hitting the corner of the pocket. Because I know that if I can get into that gap, I can bring it down into this direction. Shot looks like this. I'm going to put a lot of low on this just to get a little bit more spin out of the ball. And then we're straight to the pocket. So that's a great shot. It's a lot of fun. I made it on the first try again, but I've shot tons of them in the past. But understand that that shot exists and that's how you make it. Okay, guys, if you ever get this layout in a game, stop everything, take a picture of it and text it to me. Uh, this is set up as an illustration of some of the obstacles you might run into. Here, we need to play our gold ball in the side pocket. We can't come off of multiple rails because our route is blocked. We can't jump because it wouldn't do us any good anyway. The ball's on the opposite side. What we're going to do here is one of those knack shots. There's no math for this, guys. You're going to come up off of this short rail with left hand spin, which is going to bring our cue ball back here to play our object ball in the side. Now, this is the good news. You can't scratch, unless you're on some kind of ridiculous table where it's off level or whatever, <laughs> you're not going to scratch in that side pocket. The second thing, which is bad news, is our target is one half of the width of a ball. So if you look at the diameter of the ball, half of it is practically in the pocket here. So we have a very small target. So keep in mind the options. Do we shoot it? Do we not shoot it? Do we give our opponent ball in hand? Do we simply play some kind of safe and send one of his balls to a, a, a bad area and then see if he runs out or not? I'd shoot this on just about anybody, but I've shot no less than a thousand of them in my lifetime. No less than a thousand. So I have a feel for the shot, but until you develop that feel, you have to decide do I want to shoot that in a game? Anyway, the shot is not all that complicated. Once you have a feel for the spot that you're going to hit and you have your English dialed in, as I was saying with the multi-rail shots, with for me, 
is just about the exact number of tips of English, same number of tips of English on every shot. That's where I try to stay. Just for consistency purposes, this shot becomes makeable. Shot looks like this. And we are out. Okay guys, if you watch my videos, you've seen this shot before. This is called a parallel shift. And it is one of the simplest ways to kick at a ball no math involved. I like to say that because guys freak out when I start talking about the diamond system and multi-rail position. No math involved because you can literally measure it out. Now you guys have heard me make fun of guys that measure their their bank shots because in the real world, I mean how many of us do that? But with this shot, a parallel shift is a really good way to make sure we make contact with that ball. We have a situation where if we go off of this rail we're gonna hit this red ball on the way back. We can't come off of this rail because it's blocked. It's blocked by a ball where we need to hit it. There's a lot of obstacles here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the nearest corner that these balls both share and we're gonna measure the distance in between these two balls. So this is the halfway point for us. What we're gonna do is lift our cue up and without changing the angle, come over here and find the spot on this rail. If we hit this spot right where we're pointing, which is just about short of halfway between these two diamonds, because I just kind of randomly set them out there. If we hit that spot, we will come off of this rail and this rail and hit our object ball that we're aiming for. Again, running English on all of these shots, anytime I'm going off of multiple rails, and your speed and the amount of English should be dialed in. You can't get much easier than that. That's the parallel shift. Okay gang, remember the last time you had this configuration in a match? Now, you're not gonna ever have this configuration, but you will have situations where the jump is a little too close. It's also a little too close to the rails down here. We might end up on the floor as we bounce, as we bounce off the uh, slate. There's no multi-rail shot to get to this. Uh, there's a lot of things that we might try. We could try massaying around here if we were Florian, but we're not. So what we're going to do is shoot off of this rail. We're going to be coming down on the cue ball, so it'll be slightly elevated when it hits this rail, it will jump over these balls to play this ball here. Now, I've been shooting this for about 10 years and I can tell you that it is still not a high percentage shot. So I'm gonna record each of my attempts and hopefully we get it on the first try. What do you think? Did I come close? <laughs> Let's try it again. Again, we want to jump over after hitting this rail. There's the shot. So, Florian hit me in the comments and let me know what I did wrong the first time. But in order to make that shot, guys, keep in mind that we are coming down on the cue ball so that it is elevated. It is slightly off the table when it hits this rail. And that's what allows it to jump over to hit this ball. So the amount of elevation, the amount of drive into the table, the aim coming off that rail, all of those things are factors in making this shot. Let's shoot it again. Nice, two in a row. I'm ready for the trick shot competitions. Don't spend a lot of time practicing some of these that are just very rare occurrences, but some of them are more common than others and should get your full attention. 90% of the time, all we need to do is make contact with our object ball. We don't always have to put it in the pocket. Focus on the ones that are more common to your situations than others. And hit me in the comments, let me know what you think, and I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe.